Hi, in the last video we introduced parallel and perpendicular lines and in this video we're going to talk about writing equations of lines that are parallel and perpendicular. Last time we talked about what parallel lines are. When I think about them, I think about the side of the road. If you look at the left side and the right side of the road, the two never meet and your road is usually always the same distance across. Okay, and so that's what parallel lines are. Two lines that run side by side, never cross, and stay the same distance apart. And what we know about parallel lines is parallel lines have the same slope. And that makes sense. If this is changing at the same rate as this is changing, which is what our slope is, then they stay the same distance apart. And here I have an example. If our line is in slope intercept form, we can read the slope off as the number in front of x. So the slope of this line is 2 thirds. The slope of this line is 2 thirds. And again, I'm able to do that because this is in slope intercept form, meaning y is isolated all by itself. If two lines have the same slope, then we know that they are parallel. Now perpendicular lines, continuing our street theme, form a right angle. And this is a sign that's near my house. And when I come up on this intersection, I either have to go left or right. And the two roads form a right angle. And that's what we mean by perpendicular lines. They form a right angle. When we think of the slopes of perpendicular lines, we know that they are opposite meaning that one needs to be positive and one needs to be negative, opposite, different signs, and reciprocal. And remember what the reciprocal is, okay? If, it's, if you have two over third, over three, the reciprocal is three over two. The numerator goes to the denominator, the denominator goes to the numerator. And here I have another example of perpendicular lines this time. Again, y is isolated all by itself. So if I want to know the slope of this line, it's the number in front of x, which is 2. The slope of this line is the number in front of x, which is negative 1 half. And now I would conclude that these are, in fact, perpendicular. Because notice, they're opposite. One is positive, one is negative, and they are reciprocal. The reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. So how do we use this to construct equations of parallel and perpendicular lines? Well, I have a couple of examples. This type of problem will say, write an equation of a line parallel to, and then they give us a formula for a line passing through a given point. What we're going to do is take the line that they've given us and the only thing we're going to do with this is figure out the slope. Why? We want to construct a parallel line. If we're given a line that it's parallel to, we know that parallel lines have the same slope. So if we figure out the slope of this line, we will know what the slope of our new line needs to be. So we have 2x minus 4y equals 8. Now be careful here. Our slope is not 2 because in order to read the slope off, we have to have this in slope intercept form, which means y is isolated all by itself. So what I'm going to do is move my 2x over by subtracting 2x each side. I get minus 4y equals minus 2x plus the 8. And now to isolate y, I'm currently multiplying by negative 4, so I want to divide by negative 4. Whatever I divide one side by, I have to divide the other side by. And to make this easy, I'm going to divide all the terms. Negative 4 over negative 4 goes to 1, and I'm left with 1y. Negative 2 over negative 4, a negative over negative becomes positive, and 2 over 4 becomes 1 half with the x. 
And then 8 divided by negative 4 would be negative 2. Now, I said I'm only using this line to figure out the slope. So if you get this number wrong, it will not matter. We only care about the slope. So we hopefully will not get that wrong. Our slope of this line is 1 half. And now I know the slope and I know a point. And in previous videos, we constructed equations of lines given the slope and the point. And to do that, we use the point slope formula, which is y equals m x minus x1 plus y1. And we filled in our values. Now, the key here is to recognize, is it parallel or is it perpendicular? As soon as we see that it's parallel, we know it's going to have the same slope. So I'm just going to plug this number in here. I get y equals 1 half. Remember, where does my x1, y1 come from? Well, that comes from the point that we're given. Here is my x1. Here is my y1. So I would have x minus x1, which is 3, plus y1. But my y1 is a negative 5, so I'm going to have a minus 5. Now, this is the point slope version of an equation of a line. To get it in the slope intercept form, I would have to do some algebra. Distribute my 1 half. Y is going to equal 1 half times x is 1 half x. 1 half times a negative 3 is minus 3 over 2, then minus the 5. Combining like terms, I would have to convert this to a common denominator. Minus 5 over 1 equals what over 2? To go from 1 to 2, I multiply by 2. Whenever I multiply the denominator by, i got to multiply the numerator by. So this is going to be a negative 10 over 2. You may not need to do that, but in case you do, here's how that works. And now combining my like terms, I get y equals 1 half x. I'm going to combine these two. It's going to be negative 13 over 2. So this would be the equation of my line or parallel sorry, to this line. And again, the key to this is knowing that parallel lines have the same slope. So all I use this line for is to determine the slope. Because they're parallel, I use that exact number in my formula, and I plug my point in. Doing my algebra, I end up with this equation. Let's do an example with perpendicular lines. So in this example, we want to write an equation of a line perpendicular to this line, passing through the point 7, negative 4. Again, the key here is to recognize that we have a perpendicular line this time. And all we're going to use this for is to find the slope. So I have 3x plus 6y equals 17. Again, 3 is not my slope. I have to first isolate my y. I'm going to subtract 3x each time. 6y equals a minus 3x plus 17. Divide by 6, divide by 6, divide by 6. I get that y equals negative 3 over 6 becomes minus 1 half x plus 17. Again, it's perfectly OK to get this wrong. We're not going to use it. All we're doing is the slope. So here is my slope. But this says that they are perpendicular. So the slope of my new line, or the perpendicular line, will have slope opposite, so this is negative, so I'm going to make my new one positive, and reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of 1 over 2 is 2 over 1. I don't write it that way. I'll just write it as 2. So now we can use our point slope version of an equation of a line and fill in. Instead of taking the exact slope this time, because it's perpendicular, I'm using the opposite reciprocal slope which is 2. And now for my x1, y1, 
I'm going to plug in this point. So it's minus x1, which is 7, plus y1, which is negative 4. And again, if I want my answer in slope-intercept form, I have to do my algebra, distribute the 2, 2x minus 14 minus 4, and get y equals 2x minus 18. Now the really cool thing about these is we can always check them using a graphing tool. I'm using a graphing tool called GeoGebra, and I'm not going to teach you how to use it in this video, but please access my video about graphing in GeoGebra for more information. All right, so first let's look at our parallel equation. So what I'm going to do is graph this equation. I could also graph it in this form and this equation and make sure that they are in fact parallel lines. So I'm just going to come here and type in my first equation 2x minus 4y equals 8 and I'm not going to bother to get it in slope intercept form on the outside chance I made a mistake. And now my second equation is y equals 1 half x minus 13 over 2. Always a good idea to put your fractions in parentheses. And you can tell from this graph that they are in fact parallel lines. They are the same distance apart and changing at the same rate. So when I constructed my new equation of a line, it's this, and this was the original equation. So the graph allows me to double check. Now we're going to look at our perpendicular line, so I'm going to graph this one and this one that we came up with. All right, let's get rid of the first two. So I had 3x plus 6y equals 17. That was given to me in the first, in the problem itself, and the equation we came up with was y equals 2x minus 18. All right, and you can see that they join at the T, all right, and therefore they are perpendicular lines. So if you only remember one thing from these two videos that I've shown you on parallel and perpendicular lines, remember that parallel lines have the same slope, they're the same distance apart, same slope, and perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal. Both of these can't be one or the other, it has to be both. 